Well, hi there. Whenever I show a big snake to a group of people, someone always asks, is that an anaconda? So to answer your question, yes, this is an anaconda. There are two different species of anacondas, the green and the yellow, and this is the one everybody is asking about because this is the most massive snake on Earth. Not only is it the biggest by size, it is also a disproportionately strong snake, as you will no doubt observe throughout this entire video. This particular green anaconda is Bayos, and she comes to us from Scales and Tails in Utah. And Scales and Tails is a really cool place that keeps all kinds of amazing animals and does presentations and shows. And I gotta tell you, COVID has been a little bit hard on them. And it's not inexpensive to feed incredible animals like this. And when you can't really do very many shows, that becomes a very major concern. And so they actually could use a little bit of support right now. We're gonna have a link down in the description, but if you could go there and, and consider helping support these animals, that would do something awesome for a really amazing place. But I wanna tell you a story for a second. My brother-in-law once told me that if he were to go to the Amazon, he would wear a boot knife so that he could defend himself if a dainty little anaconda like this one attacked him. I asked him if he'd seen very many constrictors grab prey, and unsurprisingly, he hadn't, but he did spend the next several days watching them do so on YouTube. This snake is probably the most capable of grabbing and immediately overpowering a person of any snake on the planet. For reasons explained in our video about how snakes eat, snakes generally don't eat people. However, none are better equipped to eat a person than this one. They do feed upon jaguar and caiman, as well as basically every other animal in their environment, so people might be worth a shot from time to time. Which of course begs the question, is the green anaconda the best pet snake? And is the green anaconda the best pet snake for you? So to help you figure this out, we are going to score the green anaconda, the largest snake in the world, based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the green anaconda a score of one out of five. Handling a young green anaconda, which honestly, this green anaconda still qualifies as being a young anaconda because she's only about 12 feet long and 70 pounds. Handling a young green anaconda can be a little bit like handling a bitey rainbow boa, uh, which I have actually found to be surprisingly strong for their size. However, as this snake begins to approach 15 feet and 150 pounds, which would be twice the weight of this snake, you will find it to be nearly impossible for most people. If you don't believe me, find somebody with a 30 pound boa and pull that thing out of its enclosure. Then make it five to 10 times that heavy, soaking wet and proportionally much stronger. This is going to take a team, which I might need help from right now. Like I said, it's gonna take a team and that's just as well because a large percentage of snake keepers get bitten and coiled by a snake at some point in their snake keeping careers. If the snake that coils you happens to be an adult green anaconda and you are alone, you are probably going to die. These guys are also usually submerged in water and they eat like boas, so you're definitely gonna wanna use a giant snake hook with a broad hook, as a narrow hook could easily hurt the snake, to let the snake know that it is being handled and not fed. And then probably, uh, you're gonna need that snake hook to lift it somewhat out of the water so you can grab it without going for a swim. You're gonna wanna start working with that green anaconda while it is still too small to kill you. But adult females especially will outgrow the capability to be handled by almost anyone by themselves, even if you're not worried about being killed. Like I said before, this anaconda comes to us from Scales and Tails, Utah, where they have teams of people to work with them. And this 
Anaconda here is probably about as good as a green anaconda can get, but they're still going to get to a size that is just absolutely unmanageable for a single person. Like I said, this one's only half grown. Imagine. Ugh, come here. I just want to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who provided these stronger legs for this table. We had some real sketchy legs when we first moved to our new studio here at Clint's Reptile Room, and this snake would have absolutely destroyed this table. So this video wouldn't have been possible here in our studio in all of this snake's glory if it weren't for our patrons at Patreon. And so I want to thank you guys, and I want to invite you all to check out our Patreon you know, because you do a lot for us and we try to give a lot back as well. When it comes to care, we give the green anaconda a score of one out of five. And I'm gonna begin by telling you this is a huge controversy because this is a giant semi-aquatic snake. And being semi-aquatic is always a pain. It means that you need to provide the needs of a terrestrial reptile and a similarly sized fish all in the same enclosure. And this is a pain when it's a red-eared slider. When it's a 150 pound snake, well, that's just a whole other level of pain. And that's where the controversy comes in. This is a giant snake that spends a lot of its life submerged in rivers and lakes, but it only needs enough water to stay hydrated. And maintaining an aquarium large enough for a giant snake is such a pain that maybe it isn't worth it if the snake doesn't absolutely require it. So I will tell you that you can keep an anaconda with nothing more than a big water bowl, like what you would use for a Burmese python or other large snake. And this would be better than keeping an anaconda in a nasty bacteria basin because you don't know how or you decided not to keep the water clean. But what I want to do is I want to take you through what keeping an anaconda with water needs to look like. So step one, get an enormous enclosure. Some people say a snake needs to be able to extend completely. At the very least, it needs to include several feet of dry land floor space. For substrate, cypress mulch is a great option, although other substrates can also be used. You're gonna need to provide a basking spot because this animal needs to be able to heat up its body to properly digest its food. You're gonna need to make sure that this powerful snake cannot burn or electrocute itself on the heat source for whatever it is that you use to warm the enclosure. And that's not easy to accomplish with a snake this big, this maneuverable, and this powerful. <laughs> Lamps and radiant heat panels might be a good option. Uh, make sure they never get wet. Uh, Anaconda-sized hides on the land would be a, a good addition. And make sure this enclosure is escape-proof for a very powerful 15-foot snake. Again, some people would say that you should just add a big water bowl and call it a day. But to give this snake the life like they have in the wild, it needs to be able to submerge itself completely. This will also be where the snake makes its poopies. This isn't a big deal when you're in a river, but it's a pretty big deal when you're in a bathtub. You feel me? So what do you do with those poopies? What you can't do is ignore those poopies. What you must do is filter that water and change it regularly. Have you ever tried to filter a fish tank in such a way that a 15 foot snake can't mess with the filter or all of its tubes? Me either, sounds terrible. And remember, you will need easy access to that filter because you will need to clean it all of the time. And you will also need to perform regular water changes and total disinfecting. Oh, and also don't let the snake kill you while you're doing this. You're gonna need a friend to spot you or help you to move the snake, which takes us back to the one out of five it got for handleability. And pray that you never have a leak because this is enough water to really wreck your day. Oh, and then you will need to heat that water. Humidity will also be important. Make sure that your enclosure is humid, but well ventilated. Oh yeah, and then there's food. The good news is that like most boas, they have a slow metabolism. And they should only be fed every couple of weeks, maybe once a month as adults. The bad news is that this is a giant snake that eats crocodilians, big cats, and rodents of unusual size. Whoa! <laughs> the good news is, is that they eat about everything else too. But feeding giant snakes means giant feeders. It means you should make friends with a farmer. 
in a nutshell, it will be a nightmare to keep in the water. And even if you decide not to give it the semi-aquatic life, you're still talking about keeping a berm, but like the Mike Tyson of berms. Hi there. I wanted to take just a minute to talk to you about the Ridge Wallet. Ridge is actually a sponsor of this video. And I gotta tell you, I've been carrying this Ridge Wallet around for a long time. This is an amazing gift. And I say that because a wallet is something that, it's kind of hard to just sit down and buy yourself a wallet, but it's also something that you carry with you every day and really enjoy. So if you want to give somebody a gift that maybe they wouldn't think to get for themselves, but will cause them to think of you every day, check out the Ridge Wallet. You can check them out right here. That link's also down in the description. And if you use the coupon code CLINT, you get 10% off. That's pretty rad. When it comes to hardiness, we give the green anaconda a score of four out of five. The biggest threat to your anaconda will be dehydration. These remind me in so many ways of just colossal rainbow boas. If you have a huge heated and filtered water portion, that should never be a problem. However, if you decide to take the easy route, then it might be. Also watch for obesity, as these snakes will eat six times a day if you let them. When it comes to availability, we give the green anaconda a score of three out of five. While you won't find these in every pet shop, I have seen them in pet shops. They're at some expos, and they're also available pretty much anytime you want online. If you want an anaconda, you could have one tomorrow, unless they're illegal in your area, which is often the case, so check your laws. Barring this, though, availability is not the reason not to get a green anaconda. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the green anaconda a score of one out of five. These guys basically need the same enclosure as an Asian water monitor. It can probably be a bit smaller because this is a snake instead of an active giant monitor. But then the snake itself is more expensive than an Asian water monitor. And that's fine because if cost is an issue, then a green anaconda probably isn't for you. If space is an issue, a green anaconda isn't for you. Because that enclosure will be huge, still probably most of a room in most houses. And you will need a lot of substrate, basking lamps and heat panels, a thermostat, oh, Another giant heater for the water, and a massive filter, and a pond, and it better not leak. Maybe you should add some flood insurance. You're also going to need an employee to save you if you ever get coiled. I didn't even factor the head in. Also not included is the large animals that it will eventually need to eat. So just get a BCI, okay? <laughs> And this is why overall we give the green anaconda a score of two out of five. In conclusion, if what you want is an impressively large snake that everyone will think is an anaconda, you should get a common boa. But if you just have to answer the question, yes, it is an anaconda, then what you want is probably a yellow anaconda, which is about 30% less insane. But if you have to keep the most massive snake in the world, well, this is it. <laughs> As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Thank you again, Scales and Tails, for making this awesome moment possible. Well, hi there. Aw, nerds. Thanks a lot, car. Get a muffler, hippie. Attacked him. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Little hedgehog giant anaconda. Good times. Oh, you're a good girl. You are a good girl. You're a scoop ya. Oh, you're a big girl. And they, what? You need some help. No, I'm good. Oh, there you go. That's a good girl. <laughs> this will just be a video of me slowly being engulfed <laughs> by a green anaconda. Oh, she's very powerful. She's very powerful. If I could get that arm out, that'd be just delightful. You're a delightful thing. Thank you. Yes, my watch. I shouldn't have worn it. watch. You should take off that watch. Yes, I should have. Ah, I lived. Okay. <laughs> She's going through my chair. Ugh. So if somebody could get her head, oh, we're just going to have to steer her back onto the table. Oh, I know. Do you want her out from behind you? Oh, yeah. No, well, she'll, she'll, she will not be able to avoid getting out from behind me if we're steering, steering her onto the table. She'll, she just has to go through the chair. That's just the way it is. I know it. Things will never be the same. 
that's she just the way it is. <laughs> She'll get through. There we'll go. get through this together, girl. We'll get through this together. Oh, little treadmilling for you, like it's no big deal. All right, well, I guess we're back. We're back. All right, I'm gonna need help again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble now. No, I'm doing fine. I don't need rescuing. I just, I'm in. I'm in trouble. I can. I need to get myself out of. You're a good giant super snake. Everybody loves you. Thanks for not squeezing. So <laughs> I'm having a good time too. I really am. Like this is delightful. As long as I don't die. Oh, you're such a good snake. <laughs> this is this is my first time ever handling a giant anaconda while trying not to pay attention to the giant anaconda. <laughs> trying to do something else. See, I get to snuggle you like I couldn't snuggle the Gila monster. But it only needs, it only needs, but it only needs, but it only needs enough water to stay hydrated. Well, it worked out. I love that. <laughs> well, I gotta wait for you guys to simmer down. No, All no, right. it's, I just want But it only needs enough water to stay hydrated. Poopies. How was I saying it before? <laughs> they make some big poopies. <laughs> oh, you're a good snake with good head squish. <laughs>